Well, good morning and uh, welcome to my study. You can see that uh, I've got it sorted and sorted out. There's there's no boxes behind me at all now and there's some books on the shelves over there. That's great, isn't it? It's, it's beginning to really feel like somewhere that I can settle and work now. And that's uh, something that uh, the people of Israel needed to know. They needed to know how to settle as God's people with God amongst them. Ash left us on the verge of the promised land yesterday, where the people had a code to live by, the law that God had given them through Moses. But I wonder what else you would want if you had been rescued by God from the promised land, from Egypt. You were on the way to the promised land. You've been told how to treat one another and how to live as God's people, what other thing might you want to know? Hit pause and have a think about that. Here's the other thing that God taught the people. God gave the people on the verge of the promised land. Uh, well, actually, he'd given it to them a, a while back before, actually, when they were wandering through the wilderness. They had 40 years wandering through that wilderness. And they were a sinful people. Uh, we heard yesterday how Moses had struck the rock but in his frustration that uh, uh, the people weren't, weren't uh, obeying him and uh, listening to God. What they were, they were a sinful people, but they had a holy God living amongst them. So God also gave them rules about how they could approach him, how they could uh, uh, have this holy God in their midst. You see, if they approach God too soon and on their own terms, they would get burnt up. And that happens to a couple of guys uh, who decided they were going to approach God on their own terms. And they got closer and closer and closer and closer and closer. And when they got too close, God burnt them up and the ground opened up under them. God could not be approached on the people's terms, but only on his. So he gave them instructions to build a tabernacle. Now, this tabernacle had all sorts of kind of no entry signs around it. So uh, uh, it, it was it was constructed to say God lives in this middle bit. And you can't come in. Only one person was allowed in, and that was the high priest, Aaron who was Moses's brother. He was allowed in, but he had to do all sorts of uh, sacrifices and cleansing rituals uh, to, uh, to, to uh, show that he was a sinful person who was going into God's presence and, and to show that it was only God who could deal with that sin because God had given him the means by which he could approach God despite his sin. And this tabernacle was a reminder to the Israelites that they could not approach God on their own terms. Uh, God had given them all sorts of sacrifice, sacrificial laws. They had to uh, sacrifice animals uh, because the blood paid for their sin. Uh, there was this amazing one with a couple of goats. One goat they had to kill and uh, the, the, blood, uh, the blood was for their sin. The other one... The high priest had to lay their hand, lay his hand on the he goat's head and then send the goat out into the wilderness, never to come back again. And it was as if the sin of the people had gone on to this scapegoat, as it was called. That's where the saying comes from and had gone out into the wilderness away from the people. That's how far God was promising to remove the people's sin from them. But still, this tabernacle was there. They couldn't approach God. Because God is holy and they were sinful. And they, every time they moved, they had to pack up this tabernacle and then, and then get it out again when they stopped. As this, this constant reminder that they could not live with a holy God because it would kill them. God's holiness would burn them up. And that's one of the wonders of uh, Jesus coming to the earth, isn't it? That Jesus, God, made flesh, tabernacled, lived, dwelt among us. That's absolutely incredible, isn't it? And this tabernacle theme 
works its way all the way through the Old Testament until we get to Jesus. And I'm sure we'll pick it up again as we think through the story of the Bible. But as they're there on the uh, cusp of the promised land, they have the rules to live by and they have the way that they could have God living amongst them. I'm going to pray for us and we'll see you again soon. Let me pray. Our Father, thank you that uh, despite our sin, Jesus lived, dwelt, tabernacled amongst us. Thank you that somehow this mystery that we'll find out the answer to later on was possible, that a holy God could live with his people. And Father, we pray as we approach Isaiah 5 this week, that we would be aware of our sin and the wonder of ye not burning us up, but being with us. Amen. See you soon.